What's up, math fans? Hopefully you've been analyzing uh, trigonometric functions and you're comfortable with the sine, cosine, and tangent curve. And there's different things you can do. So in this video, I wanna talk about how to analyze the period of a trigonometric function and a period, think about a period in school, it's how long it takes to, for a lesson, to complete a lesson. Most schools have about 45 minute periods. So a period is kinda of like a length of time Really, it's the measurement on the x-axis of how long it takes to complete a full cycle. So if you're thinking about a period in school, it's how long it takes to complete a full lesson. In math, it's how long it takes to complete a full cycle. And there's a direct relationship between period and frequency. Frequency is the amount of full cycles you see, how frequent they occur. So you've got frequency related to period. Frequency is how many cycles you see, period is how long it takes a cycle to complete. So you gotta be comfortable, first of all, with understanding the two different major trigonometric functions, the sine and the cosine. So if I'm looking at this curve here, I'm looking at sine, and if I'm looking at this curve here, I'm looking at cosine. Um, the default graph goes from zero to two pi. That's what I mean by a full cycle, a full curve. Don't think that this hump is a curve, a full curve is going all the way up, coming all the way down, and then going back to the starting position so that the curve can then repeat, and it repeats and repeats forever in both directions. So one full cycle, one full curve is this shape right here. Um, same thing for the cosine is this shape right here, and then of course it'll start to repeat and repeat, but the default goes from zero to two pi. So the period of the default graph of y equals sine x is two pi. How long does it take to complete a full cycle, a full wave? That is two pi units. How long does it take to complete a full cosine? Also two pi units. So the default period is two pi units. Then there's a relationship between that and the frequency. So what if I could squeeze in, because there's different things you can do to the graph. I can mess with the amplitude, I can mess with the frequency and make it skinnier so that it more, occurs more frequently. Um, I can mess with the horizontal shift, I can pick it up and move it this way or this way. I can mess with the vertical shift, I can pick it up and move it up or down. So if you've seen an equation that looks like this or this, each variable means something else. You got your amplitude, you got your vertical shift, this talks about horizontal shift. This is not necessarily the horizontal shift, but it's a very good indicator of what the horizontal shift is. And this, of course, is the frequency. So this is the one that I'm talking about today, just this variable. And I have other videos where I explain what the other variables mean. Um, I teach it using H and K just because when I learned vertical and horizontal shifts, I learned them with H and K for other graphs. So why not apply it to trig functions? But most textbooks actually just use C and D because it's alphabetical order. So I'm worried about the coefficient of the variable x or, or theta. So I'm just worried about this. This here, b, is my frequency. Um, so let's look at this graph here. If you get a graphing calculator and you type this in, what are you going to see? Something very similar to this. Now once you type it in your graphing calculator and you press zoom I think it's choice seven, zoom standard, no, zoom trig, of course, because we're doing trigonometry, you should see something like that. I'm sure you'll see more on the other side, but your window ends up stopping right there. The screen doesn't go any further. So that's zero to two pi. So what do you see? You see two curves within zero to two pi. That means my frequency is two, but what is my period? My period again is how long it takes to complete one full, one, not two, just one full cycle. So that means you gotta figure out the coordinates of this point right here, that's the end of the cycle. Well, if this is two pi and there's two of them in there, this must be just plain old one pi. So the period of that graph is one pi. Period equals one pi. So if the default period is two pi and I squeeze two curves in, all of a sudden the period becomes one pi. Can you come up with a formula to figure that out without looking at the graph anymore? Yes, you just take the default period and divide by the frequency. So once I look here and I know the frequency is two, that's saying I can fit two pictures within a two pi distance, so the twos will cancel out and my period will be pi. 
All right, see if you can do the next one without even graphing it. Well, I'm gonna imagine what the graph looks like and I'm gonna sketch it anyway. But I don't need the graphing calculator. I wonder if you can notice that that eraser keeps falling on the floor for no reason. So here's the cosine curve. It looks kind of like a cup. And this is saying that there are three curves from zero to two pi. One, two, three. So this is the end of my window, that's two pi. But if I fit three of them in there, I just need to know the period. The period is when does the first curve end? That first curve ends right here. What are the coordinates of that? Well, it looks like you took two pi and you cut it up into thirds. So if you cut up two pi into thirds, you're literally doing two pi divided by the frequency, which is three. So you're just doing, and the eraser fell again, you're doing two pi divided by three, which is what? I don't know, people are always trying to get an answer. You don't need a, a, a beautiful answer. This is an answer. So my period is two pi over three. And if you're wondering, you can figure out that coordinate also, but doesn't help me answer this question, period two pi over three. What if they give you the period? P standing for period, of course. Uh, most people use the capital T, but I have seen P, so I'm going with P for period. What if they tell you the period? Can you determine the frequency? Maybe that would help us write the equation. So the period is pi over three means there's a graph whose full cycle ends at pi over three. Hmm, how many of those graphs could I fit in a two pi span? Well, you can draw it, you can imagine it, you can do some common sense, or you could just use the formula. My period formula is this, but the period is that. So if this is period, and in this particular question, that's period, then they must be equivalent. Just set that equal to that, cross multiply, you get pi b, pi goes first because it's an actual number versus b the um, variable, and then this way is gonna give me six pi, divide by pi on both sides because I'm trying to get the b alone, and I'm successful, my b is six. That means I can fit six curves in a two pi distance, all right? Um, and then, of course, you can imagine what the uh, equation would be. It would be either y equals sine 6x or cosine 6x. So my point is, if you know the frequency, you can easily find the period. If you know the period, you can just do one extra step, and now you know the frequency. You can go forwards, you can go backwards, doesn't matter. Here's a word problem that I saw from a regions. They talk about electricity. They say in the, in the most households, and uh, they, they look at the voltage, and the voltage occurs 60 cycles every second. That's, that's quick. You can imagine 60 full curves in a second, but that's 60 curves. I need to worry about just one curve. So if I could fit 60 curves in a second, how long does it take for just one curve? It would take 1 60th of a second. So my period would be 1 60th of a second, but my period is also known as 2 pi over b. So, can I determine B? Of course, I just did it. Now you do it. I'm gonna cross multiply. And I'm going to get, uh, let's go this way. B times one is B. 60 times two is 120 pi. And there we have, this is known as the frequency. So again, if you have the period, you can find the frequency. If you have a clue, you can deduce the period and then find the frequency. All right, so all those crazy word problems, don't be scared of them. It all applies to simple sine and cosine curves, the wave functions. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.